on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Good Tuesday evening, Tiger fans. Welcome in. Skip Bergman Field, Alec Box Stadium. Midweek baseball coming your way. Midweek just before the start of SEC play this weekend as LSU will open up conference play on the road against Texas A&M. But tonight, they'll face a team very familiar. And the UNO privateers making their way over from the Big Easy. Chase Shores will get the start tonight for the Tigers. Leading things off will be Kasten Fur hitting 389. The shortstop looks like he's ready to go and he will dig in. Fur the right hander. Chase Shores the right hander ready to go. First delivery missing outside with a fastball at 97 miles an hour. We are underway. Time of first pitch 632 Central Time. 1 0. There's a strike to even it up now. One ball and one strike. A little chilly on this Tuesday night. Game day forecast presented by AccuTemp. Again, a little bit of sunshine, but a lot of clouds tonight. Temperature currently 57 degrees as the 1 1 misses outside from Shores. Another heater, and it's now two balls and one strike. Cast and Fur comes in the game hitting 369 on the year. This team can swing it a little bit. 2 1 slap line drive right at Jordan Thompson moving just a little bit to his right able to get a glove on it and one down is fur retired on the line drive out. Privateers come in here hitting 321 as a team. Haven't pitched it quite as well though. The team ERA 5.66. They're 11 and 5 on the year. That'll bring Tyler Bischke, the second baseman, hitting 418. Can he start it all previous 16 games for Coach Dean? First pitch, breaking ball misses outside from Shores, and it's 1 0. Privateers so far really hanging their hat on defense, which we'll talk about more in the bottom of this inning. This one swung on in the air to center field. Nope, it's going to hang up, and it'll be an easy play in shallow right center for Gavin Dugas. So a line drive, fly ball out. Now there's two gone here in the top of the first inning. Yeah, by the way, Bitschke, a 16-game reach base consecutive streak, so we'll see if Tigers can put that to sleep tonight. Miguel Oseche will stand in the catcher, batting in the three spot, 293 hitter. Can also start in all 16 previous games. Shores delivers a fastball at the knees. At 98 miles an hour, it's nothing and one. And Shores again, as Jay Johnson told us before the game, looking for him to get out here, get some work, unable to get in over the weekend in that run rule sweep of Sanford as they appeal down to first. They say he went around. Shores gets ahead of Useche. Oh, and two. He said we certainly want to have him available if need be this weekend in Bryan College Station. So we'll see what the plan and what the limit is for Shores, but so far so good. Nothing in two, the pitch. Ooh, swing and a miss. That'll do it. Downhill fastball at 98. Chase Shores looks good in the top of the first inning. Line out, fly out, and a strikeout. And that'll do it for the Privateers. One, two, three in the top of the first. Tigers come to the plate, leading it off once again. Red Hot, Paxton Kling, followed by Morgan and Cruz. Back after this, this is Fighting Tiger Baseball.
Jay Shores and the LSU defense make quick work of the privateers in the top of the first inning. Three up, three down. Jay Shores finishes with a strikeout at 98 miles an hour. His first Super 1 strikeout of the day. And the Tigers quickly come to the plate here in the bottom of the first inning. It'll be Paxton Kling to lead it off, followed by Trey Morgan and Dylan Cruz. King again. Kling leading the Tigers through this 10-game win streak, batting 640. First pitch comes in, and it's a strike on the outside corner from Colton Mercer, the starter tonight for Coach Blake Dean and UNO. Again, good stuff. He's had some trouble with location and accuracy. 11 walks in his appearances so far. Here's a swing and a miss. Pulled the string, and it's nothing in two to Paxton Kling. Yeah, Kling hitting 640 with three doubles, a triple, and three dingers. Six RBIs. Couple Give stolen bases. Wide stance and a breaking ball that stays low. And it'll make it one ball, two strikes. Get a little chilly night here at the ballpark, of course, with springing forward. The sun will stay out a little bit longer. There's the one two swung on and fouled off the bat of Kling into the screen. Keeps the count one ball, two strikes. Again, I apologize for those listening on the radio, listening and watching on SEC Network Plus, a little under the weather feel a lot better but you know how that is sometimes the voice goes so Doug you may be solo by the oh, time this they, is done there's no not. there's no 10 run rule tonight here's a breaking ball that again just missed it's two and two now as Ling will quickly dig back in from the right side here's the two two and off speed swing and a miss Kling a very rare strikeout but nice execution that time by Colton Mercer, the left-hander. And we'll see Trey Morgan come to the plate. Morgan again on the season, batting 306, 313 in this 10-game win streak. And remember how none of us were worried, Doug, in that yeah. first series when he went 0 for 8? Well, he came right back and hit for the cycle <laughs> at like that Tuesday. Here's one high and inside for ball one. By the way, total pitches there for Chase Shores, nine pitches in that first inning. Here's the 1 0. Watch That's out. going to hit him. So Trey Morgan will take first base. That is the 41st hit by pitch for this Tiger team. And with one out, they have a man aboard. And we'll see Dylan Cruz, who trying to catch up with Paxton Kling in this win streak. But hey, it's impressive when Cruz is batting 5 10 through 16 games this year. Again, 529 in this win streak. So 23 RBIs. I mean, he's on pace for 100 RBIs. Morgan takes a short lead off first. The left-hander looks over. First pitch to Cruz. Off speed and outside, 1-0. and You know, talking to Blake Dean before the game, he, he said he's going to have his pitching staff challenge this LSU lineup. The last thing he wants to do, he's noticed the trend. When teams come in here and give a lot of free passes, it normally doesn't. It, it normally ends with a lopsided scoreboard. So he's definitely going to make the Tigers earn it. So he says before the game. Breaking ball inside misses. Two balls, no strikes to Dylan Cruz. Certainly understand that thought process by Coach Dean, considering put a bunch of people on board. There's really power up and down this yeah, lineup for LSU. There's, there's just, nobody you can avoid. That's, that's three it. and oh. That's just it, Chris. All the way down through number nine. They can really hurt you. They can hurt you with the long ball. And uh, you've really got to challenge this lineup. I know that sounds crazy. 3-0 pitch. Misses outside. So this time, Mercer stays away from Cruz. Hits Morgan. Now a base on balls in LSU. What Blake Dean wanted to avoid was yeah. Free passes. So now two men on, and you see Tommy White, who had his first Grand Slam as a Tiger on Sunday. And boy, what a Grand Slam it was. And it was just right of the batter's eye. Mm. Love to see those balls go out to center field. So Didn't we'll like see. it so much when I was pitching, but, you know, as a spectator. See how Mercer likes to deal with White. There's an off-speed pitch. Does catch the inside corner. It's nothing in one. Morgan at second, Cruz at first. The 0-1, off speed, misses high. That'll make it one and one. Yeah. 
White, a 395 average and seven doubles on the year, five home runs. And the 1 1 outside missing for ball two. Again, getting a scouting report on Mercer. They said his fastball going to sit anywhere from 88 to 90. He can, can at times reach 92. We've seen a lot of off speed stuff here at LSU through the first couple of batters. One down. Here's the 2 1 big swing by Tommy. And he fouls it back into the screen. And yeah, there was a fastball, just missed it. He was right on top of it, though. Anytime you see that thing fly straight back to the middle of the screen, as a pitcher, you take a deep breath and lucky to get the ball back. So now a 2 2 count. Pitch from Mercer. A little three quarter swing pops it up to left field. Coming over to make the play will be Tristan Moore. Didn't get all of that one in, kind of held back a little bit. And that's out number two. Hunters stay put first and second. And now we'll see Gavin Dugas. As we mentioned, Doug said it best. There's power up and down this lineup. And Gavin Dugas certainly in the five spot has that capability. Four home runs on the year, three doubles. An impressive 391 batting average. Pitch going to hit him. That'll load the bases. So two hit batters here in the bottom of the first inning. Exactly the opposite of yeah. what Blake Dean wanted. It is, but you know what? Colton Mercer to Tommy White just now threw a beautiful changeup right on the outside corner and got White to take a big swing at it. So although he's hit two and walked one, he did strike out Kling and threw a nice one to White. So he's got a He's kind of Jekyll and Hyde right now. Two outs, bottom of the first, no score. Bases loaded now as Ethan Fry got the start tonight. Right fielder, first pitch, fastball. Inside corner, cold strike, nothing in one. 19 pitches so far for Mercer. Only eight strikes. But I guess he's made those eight strikes count. 11th at bat of the year for a Fry. Mm. There's a strike at the letters and falls behind nothing in two. So a chance here for Fry, the freshman, batting an even 400. To add to his seven runs batted in so far in his freshman campaign. Nothing in two. Swing fouls it back into the screen to stay alive. Still nothing and two. Fry, 0 for 1 over the weekend, had a chance to swing the bat on one occasion against the Bulldogs. Bases loaded. Morgan at third, Cruz at second, two guys at first, and 0 oh 2. Off speed, just missed the outside corner. Nice placement there by Mercer. Thought he might get it. Good eye by Ethan, and it's 1 and 2. Yeah, that, was, that was the exact same pitch he threw to Tommy White. That changeup just missed the outside corner. I think I'd go back to that one. The 1 2, oh. right down Broadway. No offer on the swing, called strike three, and the Tigers strand three on the base pads. So no runs, no hits, three men left on. We go to the top of the second, scoreless here at the box. Privateers come up next on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Time now for Step Hub, move of the game. Step Hub is rewarding lucky fans with the best seats in the house. Congratulations. Step Hub is the official ticket marketplace of LSU Athletics.
Voice of College Baseball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Tristan Moore, the left fielder for the Privateers, will lead things off here. Top of the second inning, no score. Jay Shores ready to work. One slap right back at him, knocked it down with a glove. Going to be picked up by Thompson near second base. The one-hop throw to first, not in time. As Shores tried to rip it out of the air, and it came off his glove and then slowed down, and Thompson made a valiant effort to try to get a play out of it, but more able to beat the throw at first and the leadoff man aboard. Well, Shores gave Thompson a chance to make the play. He knocked it down just enough. It was a sure base hit. Kind of tough to get it over that. It's probably about eight feet off the ground. At least you've got to get it before Shores can get a glove on it. Jesse De La Cruz stands in. In first hit of the ball game. Infield single goes to Tristan Moore. Yeah, that's their big bat, too, hitting 450 on the year with four home runs. 1 0 to De La Cruz. A cold strike to even it up 1 and 1. Wind blowing firm here, left to right. Towards the intimidator at the box, the 1-1. One, one. Missing high and inside, that'll make it 2-1. Again, velocity not the issue for Chase no. Shores. He can wind up and deliver with the heat. Steady mid-90s so far with the fastball. 2-1. Check swing, got a piece of it, rolls up the first baseline. That one dialed back at 94, and it's two and two. Yeah, and I think he might even be throwing a two seamer there. It looks like it might be running into De La Cruz, the right handed hitter, because we've seen a fastball up to 98 and some change. Runner at first, the 2 2. Misses outside, that one at 95. Yeah, that was a four seamer. That'll fill the count now to De La Cruz. Batting 235 from the right side of the plate. Moore again will take his lead. He's one for one in stolen bases, and now Shore is going to throw over. But but you know that 2-2 pitch, right? Like, that's what I'm kind of talking about with the difference between an SEC closer or starter. That's your best pitch. You don't want it to get to a 3-2 count, so that pitch has to hit the outside corner, but... Shores missed there by a couple inches. Payoff delivery to the plate. Swung on and fouled back to the screen. Elevated that fastball did Shores. Daylight Cruz could not pass it up. Still remains three balls, two strikes. Fans Capital One offering checking and savings accounts with no fees or minimums. Capital One, what's in your wallet? More a short lead off first. Shores to the plate. Another payoff pitch and just staying alive as De La Cruz sends it again back to the screen. Count remains three balls, two strikes. One of the bright spots offensively for this privateer squad. They've got 44 runs batted in with two outs in the inning. So it's a team that figure doesn't give up very easily. And that one, another one fouled back. So fighting up. At the plate is Daylight Cruz, as that was another fastball challenge from Jay Shore. Still, the count remains three and two. Who's going to give in first? Shores from the stretch. Another payoff pitch. Launched to center field. Cruz, though, coming in, coming over. He'll make the grab for out number one. Moore will retreat back to first base. One down here in the top of the second. Chase Shore is now up to 19 pitches. It's important. Just speculating. Probably think he's uh, going to get 50 to 60 pitches before he'll call it a night so he can be ready for action this weekend. Mitchell Sanford now, a left-hander, the right fielder for the Privateers. We'll try his hand. Runner goes on the first pitch. A little nibbler back to the mound, and the only play is going to be from Shores to first. So they put the runner in motion and then on basically a swinging bunt comes right back to Shores and will simply throw it to first to record the second out. So now the Privateers with a runner in scoring position in a scoreless game. Hey, and it will be up to Heron. Blake Dean putting the hit and run on there. 
Not quite what he was hoping for, but it did advance the runner at least. So Anthony Heron Jr. hails out of Chicago. Right handed hitter with Tristan Moore down at second. Here's a ground ball to Jordan Thompson at short. He'll scoop it up, throw to first, and Morgan has it in time for out number three. So the privateers come up scoreless. They do have one hit. They leave one man on. No errors by the Tigers. And we head to the bottom of the second inning. LSU will have Jones, Thompson, and Malazzo. Seven, eight, and nine hitters when we come back. This is Fighting Tiger Baseball. Fighting Tiger Baseball. This is the LSU Sports Radio Network. Jared Jones will lead things off for the Tigers. Scoreless game, bottom of the second inning here at the box, UNO and LSU. First delivery to Jones, off speed, breaks across the inside corner, and it's nothing and one. Over the weekend, Jared Jones, pretty good weekend, batted 600, had yeah. finished 6 of 10 at the plate. Four home runs, 10 runs batted in. Nothing in one. He'll chase one inside. They'll appeal down to first. Umpire Ryan Broussard says he did commit. It's nothing in two to Jones. Yeah, good enough for co freshman of the week honors in the SEC. The 0 2 misses outside. Again, they look to appeal, and no chance he went around. It'll be one ball, two strikes. Patcher Hurd also co pitcher of the week. Thatcher and Tommy White also awarded players of the week by collegiate baseball. There's a swing and a miss on an off speed pitch down low, and Jones upset with himself. As soon as he made the swing, he knew. Wasn't his best at bat, so one away. We'll bring to the plate Jordan Thompson batting in the eighth spot. And Jordan's kind of had some tough luck. Doug, he's batting 292, but we mentioned on Friday in that opening game against Sanford, a couple of hard hit baseballs just right at the defense. And this 10 game win streak batting 267. Looking to get things started, build some momentum into Bryan College Station. There's a nice breaking ball from Mercer, sets him up. Nothing in one. You know what? With the defense he's playing, I'll take him at 292 all year. <laughs> again, didn't fully commit. They'll say he did. Went around on a pitch again off speed outside. Nothing in two now. So Colton Mercer, after yeah. loading the bases with a couple of hit batters and a walk, but getting out of that jam. And we'll settle down here so far. Nothing in two, and this pitch missing high on the fastball. One and two, the count to Thompson. Yeah, he started the game with a strikeout, ended the inning with a strikeout to get out of that bases loaded jam, and then started this inning off with a strikeout. Still ahead in the count, the one two to Thompson. Off speed and fouled into the screen above the first base dugout. But well, Blake Dean said he, I mean, he's got a chance to be really good, and you see what he means when he's dialed in and. Throws that breaking ball over for a strike. He's thrown the changeup out there on the outside corner a couple times, and his fastball is plenty good enough. 
One, two, way outside. Evens account two and two. Jay told me down in the clubhouse before the game. He said, man, he took note. He saw Mercer out there loosening up a little bit prior to the game. He said, wait a minute, this isn't one of their weekend guys? Certainly has the tools to be effective on the mound. Two and two, the count to Thompson. Ground ball, slow bouncer to short, picked up by Fur. The throw to first, a little up the line, but handled by Heron. Four out number two. He, he might not be a weekend starter, but he they're thinking of him the same way that Coach, uh, Coach Johnson's thinking about Chase Shores tonight. They want him fresh and ready for the weekend. It'll be a challenging week for the privateers. Oh, yeah. They got LSU tonight, and then they go to Austin, take on Texas over the weekend. But two outs, that'll bring Alex Malazzo, who's really hitting the ball well in his limited at bats this season. Gets the start tonight, his second start behind the plate. This will be his 12th plate appearance of the year. First pitch, Mercer with a breaking ball, gets ahead, nothing in one. Pitch to Alex, swing and a miss. 0 oh 2. Yeah, pulled the string again there with that change up, low and at the knees, right over the outside part of the plate. And he's been 0-2 to all three hitters in this inning. Mercer gets the sign. Left-hander will wind. The 0-2 pitch. High and outside, ball one. Or at least one two. Two outs, nobody on. The one two to Malazzo. Drops in low, evens a count two and two. Mercer looks in. Another 2 2 pitch, and Malazzo delivers a base hit. Drops into left field. So Alex with his sixth hit of the season will improve on that 455 batting average. And again, his entire career talked about what he can give you defensively behind the plate. Suddenly, all the work we talked about he did in the offseason showing up here in 2023. Yeah, hey coach, don't forget about me over here. I mean, Brady Neal is obviously done a great job behind the dish and even better job at the plate offensively but Alex Malazzo wanted to get his fair share of time as well I'm sure top of the order Paxton Kling was a strikeout victim in the bottom of the first comes to the plate in the Tigers no stranger to two out rallies so Kling will try to keep it going here get into the game on Sunday with a three run bomb over the Tony Sashery sign and Left center. Here's it went a, over the Tony Sashery song? Yeah, right Whoa. right over it. About 440 something? It was an explanation or exclamation point, I On should say, weekend, to finish yeah. the game. That one fouled back into the screen. It's one and one. Yeah, he takes a healthy hack, <laughs> to say the least. Malazzo, short lead. Mercer will fire, and the off-speed pitch misses the plate outside. It's now two and one. I mean, Kling is... So talented with what he does in the outfield, whether it's left or right field. Got to be the, if not the fastest guy on the team. Here's the 2 1. Fastball misses outside. That'll make it 3 and 1. Yeah, if he's not, I want to see the guy who is, I want to see him race. Because he absolutely flies around the bases. Two outs, runner at first, no score. Mercer, the left-hander fires. There's a strike on the inside corner to fill it up now to clean. I would say the easy odds on favorite to be the uh, starting center fielder next year. Can we've seen a lot of him in right field getting the start in the left tonight. The three two swung on and fouled out of play right side. I asked Jay Johnson before the game, I said, Coach, first of all, your thoughts on Tommy White's return to third base. He made a couple of key plays in the game on Sunday. He said, hey, spectacular. It'll only get better as he feels better both physically and mentally from that dislocated shoulder. He said, but then all of a sudden when you have Tommy White at third, they got a ton of options in the outfield and at DH as this one swung back foul. Keeps it three and two. 
it just really opens it up for him to be able to have his best offensive lineup with a pretty good defensive lineup out there on the field. Well, pretty good. Best in the country. <laughs> Two outs. Another payoff pitch on its way. Fouled back into the screen. So now a battle between Colton Mercer and Paxton Kling with two outs here in the bottom of the second. But again, we talk about so much about the talent of Paxton Kling, but here you are, a freshman in the leadoff spot. You've been sensational through the last 10 ball games, and here you are fighting to try to keep things alive with two outs in the inning. Just veteran poise at the plate. There's a swing and a miss. That time the off-speed pitch off the plate. Clean couldn't stay away, and that's been the most effective for Colton Mercer here in tonight's game. And again, LSU comes up empty in the bottom of the second inning. No runs, one hit, one man left on. Move to the top of the third. Still no score at the box. This is Fighting Tiger Baseball. Fighting Tiger Baseball. This is the LSU Sports Radio Network. Privateers come to the plate. Top of the third inning. We're scoreless here. UNO and LSU. Chase Shore is ready to get to work. First pitch. Fastball misses outside. 1 and 0. To the batter. Noah Bailey. Senior batting 545. Again, limited. Action. He's played in five games. This is his third start of the season. The pitch low and inside makes him dance a little bit on the left side of the batter's box. And it's two balls, no strikes. Big weekend here on campus. Get LSU baseball will be in Bryan College Station for the FCC opening weekend with Texas A&M. But Kim Mulkey, LSU women's basketball begins their run in the NCAA tournament at the Merriman Center coming up on Friday afternoon as that pitch misses inside. Make it 3-0 and now to Bailey. LSU softball continues play in SEC action. They'll be at home facing the Tennessee Volunteers. They move that game back to first pitch Friday at 7. Watch out. This one high and inside for ball four. So Shores unable to find the strike zone to the leadoff hitter, and the Privateers have a runner aboard. And we'll see Isaac Williams come to the plate, batting in the nine spot. He's the center fielder. Again, hopefully the weather's going to cooperate with softball. Of course, we may have to worry about that in Bryan College Station as well. Of course, they're expecting some rain coming out of Texas and across Louisiana. Maybe we just move it away from game time. We'll be all right. Williams, a right-handed well, hitter. This pitch misses high and inside for ball one. If it sprinkles, what do you do about the bubbles? I don't know. Does that help the bubbles? No, they're not going to work. They're going to pop. Now we've got pitching coach Wes Johnson, no surprise, going to yeah. jog out here and check on Chase Shores, who threw four straight balls to the leadoff hitter Bailey and then offers up a ball one to Isaac Williams. So just checking on the right-hander real quick. Again, scoreless ball game. Each team with one hit. 
Tigers had an opportunity in the bottom of the first. Bases loaded with two outs, unable to get the hit they needed. Yeah, Should just trying to press the reset button here. It's like we have somebody starting to toss down in the bullpen. My eyes are really bad these days. It's a right-hander. Well, again, we were told, Garrett Edwards, it's loosening down in the bullpen for the Tigers. We were told would be a possible quick outing here, although I think you were right on, again, totally guesstimating yeah. as there's a throw over to first that maybe we'd see 50 pitchers or so, depending on how efficient Chase was. But there may be a different plan for Coach Jay Johnson. We'll see. Well, if he doesn't throw a little, you know, some more strikes, there will definitely be a different plan. There's a strike. Swing and a miss by Williams, and it's one and one. He's up to 26 pitches now. He's thrown 16 strikes. Here's the 1-1. One, one. This is low, 2-1 and one now to Williams. Stands in batting 255. Right-handed hitter from Alexandria, Louisiana. 2-1, just missed. Fastball at 95. Shores thought he had the location. It's now three and one. Bailey with a short lead off first, and this one slap base hit to left field. Giving Chase is going to be cling. He'll be able to backhand it on the track around second. Into third goes Bailey, and a stand-up double off the bat of Williams. So now the Privateers. With their first big threat of the evening, they've got runners second and third, nobody out, and to the top of the order we go. Yeah, and that's the eight and nine hole hitters able to get that damage done. Got to really bear down here, as you mentioned, back to the top. Garrett Edwards moving a little quicker down in that LSU bullpen. So we'll see Caston Fur lined out to Jordan Thompson to start the game in the first. That pitch from Shores misses outside. Milazzo having to slide to his right to get a glove on it. It's 1 and 0. Pitch to Fur. There's a fastball for a strike to even it up 1 and 1. Fur Hills from Ruston, Louisiana. Prepped at Ruston High School. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Fastball misses high from Shores. It's now 2-1. Yeah, he's a player, two times all two-time all Southland selection. Hit 317 last year. Two one late coming around swing and a miss. Shore sped him up with the 95 mile an hour heater and fur just couldn't get around. It evens a count two and two. So now runner second and third again. Shore is trying to climb out of him some trouble here in the top of the third. Two two pitch nice called pitch. strike three at the knees. Nice delivery by Shores. Cords his second punch out, a super one food strikeout. The big first out of the inning. Still some work left on Shores' shoulders here. So we'll see Tyler Bischke now come to the plate. Tyler popped out to Dugas in shallow right center first time up. And what a blessing this is for Jay Johnson, who is going to let him, you know, get that strikeout. He's going to make a move now, but I'd like to see Shores try to pitch his way out of that. But we will not have that opportunity. Coach Johnson on his way out. He'll have a brief conversation with Shores, his freshman right-hander. He's made the change, pitching change powered by Sunshine, your hometown John Deere dealer in Louisiana. We'll tell you more about Garrett Edwards when we continue here, top of the third inning. Privateers, runners second and third, one out, no score. This is Fighting Tiger Baseball. Pitching for the Tigers, number 43, Garrett Edwards. 
Edwards, the new pitcher for LSU. LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball. This is the LSU Sports Radio Network. Scoreless, top of the third inning. UNO with their biggest threat so far tonight. Runners second and third with one out. Jay Johnson elects to make the pitching change. Garrett Edwards takes over and tries to find two outs to get the Tigers back in the dugout. Yeah, this will be his fifth appearance of the year. That ties him for the team lead. Edwards comes into the game with a even one ERA. This is his fifth outing in a, out of the bullpen. No start yet. He's 1-0 and on the year. In nine innings of work, he's allowed six hits and one run. It was earned no walks and six strikeouts. So at the plate, he'll face Tyler Bischke, a right-hander, and the first pitch, swing and a miss. Little slider got him, and it's nothing and one to Bischke, who, by the way, again, popped up to Dugas back in that first inning. UNO with Bailey at third base. Williams with a base hit to left field is down at second. Actually, a double to left field. Here's the 0-1, down in the dirt. Played it up nicely by Milazzo to keep it in front of him. Evens a count, one and one. Yeah, this is when a catcher really earns his keep with that runner at third base and earns the trust of his pitching staff, able to block a ball up like that. Because as a pitcher, you don't want to be tentative throwing that curveball just because there's a guy at third. There's a strike at the knees. Fastball from Edwards at 94. Gets him ahead, one ball, two strikes. And, you know, it's interesting. We were trying to guesstimate how long Chase Shores would go into this game, but it did occur to me, Jay mentioned to me in his office today that the one regret from this weekend, first the one two, and breaking ball misses outside. Evens a count two and two. He's told him, you know, the team looked focused all three games. You run rules, Sanford, all three games, outscore them by a huge margin. He said, hey, if there's one regret, I didn't get enough guys out of the bullpen. Yeah. So we may see a number of arms here tonight before we are done. Two two pitch, way outside, Malazzo having to work to keep that one in the mitt. Now feels the count three and two. Yeah, I expect to see Edwards, of course, tonight. Sammy Dutton, probably Bryce Collins. Seems like it's been a while. Riley Cooper. Although he pitched Sunday, right? Yep. There's a called strike three on the outside corner. That time, Bisky couldn't decide if he wanted to go around. Didn't matter. Jordan Alvarado, our home plate umpire, made the decision for him. Two down, big strikeout for Edwards. Yeah, he pretty much stuck with that same pitch the entire at bat. It was a big slider that was away to the right hander. And Bischke did a nice job of staying off of it until that very last pitch, but it was a good one from Edwards. Miguel Useche will stand in. Right handed hitter. Strikeout victim his first time up. Pitch from Edwards misses low. 1 0. Seche hailing from Caracas, Venezuela. Making his way to the shorefront in New Orleans at UNO. Third team, all Southland Conference choice last year. Also made the all tournament team. 1 0, misses away. Now two balls, no strikes. Earlier we talked about 
UNO going to play a three game series with Texas in Austin coming up this weekend before beginning Southland Conference play. Weekend after next, here's the 2 0. -oh. Big swing and a miss by Suche, and it's 2 and 1. Should be a great one in Beaumont, March 24th. It'll be UNO and Lamar, two former Tigers, now skippers at, for both the privateers and at Lamar. Will Davis, Blake Dean doing battle in Southland Conference play. And Edwards comes back again. Fastball down in the zone, swing and a miss, gets the same result. It's 2 and 2. Two outs, runner second and third, a scoreless game. Edwards called upon out of the pin. And he put out the smolder here. 2-2. Two -two. Lifted in the air, center field. Dylan Cruz backpedals. Backpedals some more, and he will have it for out number three. So Edwards comes in, does his job after the privateers threaten. They get no runs on one hit. They leave two men on. They go to the bottom of the third. Still scoreless. Tigers will send to the plate Morgan Cruz and White. Two, three, and four. This is Fighting Tiger Baseball. And LSU batter gets an extra base hit in the city. The band in section 2-8, row 5, seat 13, receives a barbecue guy's prize pack. We enter for a chance to win a victory grill. On the LSU Sports Radio Network. Bottom of the third inning, still scoreless here at the box on this Tuesday night, UNO and LSU. Can I mention from the outset on the radio broadcast, a lot of cross pollination between the privateers and Tigers. Of course, the obvious one, Blake Dean, former Tiger champ, head coach at UNO. Hard to believe in his eighth season with the Privateers. Still looks like he could suit up and get out there and oh, play, he though. He could still hit it out of this ballpark. I they, say that, they say that coaching ages you. It doesn't seem to affect Coach Dean at all. He looks good. Trey, Your dad. Trey Morgan stands in to lead things off. First pitch from Colton Mercer, who so far has pitched a really good game. He really Had into has. trouble in the bottom of the first, but able to get out of it with a strikeout, leaving the Tigers scoreless. Pitch to Morgan. Swing, fouled out of play left side. Of course, Coach Palmineri first came to LSU, then finished his career for Coach Maestri, UNO. It's always kind of been this link between the two programs, and that continues to this day. The 2 1. Opposite field. Pope drops into left field. Morgan speeding into first base will stop there. And it's it's so impressive. We've talked about it his entire career here at LSU that Trey Morgan can drop baseballs just about any place on the field. That yeah. time just kind of swatted it away oppo and dropped it, what do you say, 40 feet behind the third base bag in the left field? Yeah, it was perfectly placed. And he's going to be a really good hitter at the next level because he's able to hit the pitch where it's pitched and not try to do too much with it. He keeps his hands inside the ball incredibly well. Now Dylan Cruz will stand in. Nice breaking ball from Mercer again. Breaks into the right-hander across the plate. Nothing in one to Dylan Cruz, who 
Got a board on a walk. Left stranded at second base when the Tigers had the bases juiced. Mercer fires. Swing by Cruz. Popped up. Shallow right field going over. Bischke the second baseman, and he will have it in front of Sanford, the right fielder, and that will be the first out of the inning. And now we'll see Tommy White. You may not go back and see by looking at the scorebook the job Garrett Edwards did coming in there no. with yeah. again runners second and third, Doug, but you know firsthand as a pitcher what he was able to do to find those outs and avoid allowing the privateers is really key stuff. It, it was. I'll let this pitch go first. White awaits. Mercer fires. Breaking ball, swing and a miss. Yeah, I mean, the odds had to be less than – five percent to not give up a run with leadoff runners at second and third with no outs and you got to give some credit there to chase shores as well he was able to get a strike out but garrett edwards to get the remaining two outs with no run scored was excellent nothing in one to white now mercer will just slow throw over to first get morgan back on the bag Remember, fans, StubHub, the easiest way to experience every Tiger game here at the box. Check the virtual view, then score your seats. And voila, your tickets get delivered instantly. White, big swing, launched high in the air, down the line in right, giving Chase is Sanford. It will sail foul wow. and out of play. And it's nothing than two. Looked like just a normal fly ball down the line, but ball actually one hopped the hitting facility down there in the right field corner. Lots of power from this young man, Tommy Tanks. One out, runner at first. 0 oh 2, the count to Tommy White. Mercer delivers another swing, a foul ball into the screen. Keeps it nothing than two. Talked about that off speed pitch just off the outside corner to the right handers that able to get the fly ball out from Tommy last time in the first inning. Mercer has to feel good. He got away with that pitch that was driven foul deep. And again, another one, Jack, but foul down the line and right into the seats. Still nothing in two. Five games have gone final around the SEC. Kentucky defeated Indiana earlier 12 to 2. South Carolina five to nothing winners over Presbyterian. Runner at first. Pitch to the plate. Sharp hit line drive going down for it is Spur at shortstop. Able to keep it off the dirt and record the second out. Morgan back to first base. And Fur was just able to get the glove under it there, else that would have been out in the left center field. And Morgan would have been standing on third base. Tennessee and Knoxville defeated Lipscomb 10 to nothing with the shutout. Georgia Bulldogs and Athens also scored 10 runs tonight, beating Wofford 10 to 8. And Florida came back. They were trailing North Florida 2 to nothing through the fifth inning. Gators come back 7 to 2. They win in Gainesville. Gavin Dugas stands in. First pitch breaking ball. Floats over the middle of the plate. Nothing in one. Big looping curve at 73 from Mercer. Gets him ahead early. Dugas hit by a pitch back in the first. He was left stranded when they loaded the bases. In the first inning. Runner goes and a ground ball. Towards the right side of the infield. Going to be handled by Heron. A uh -oh. foot race to the bag. They collide. They'll say Dugas is out. For out number three as he and Heron avoid what could have been a disaster, both arriving at the first base bag near the same time. But Heron gets the play and appears Dugas is okay. So the Tigers finished in the bottom of the third. Again, they come up empty. We're still scoreless. We head to the top of the fourth. Privateers up next. This is Fighting Tiger Baseball. Seconds to grab that bag and race back to the foul line. He does it 
of college baseball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Tristan Moore leads it off for UNO on the first pitch. He will send foul left side out of play. It's nothing and one as Moore bats for the second time. Had the first hit of the ball game. Back in the second was left stranded at second base. Garrett Edwards continues in relief and there's a swing and a miss low and away. That was filthy. Yeah, Tristan Moore really no chance to get a bat on that one. And he gets ahead nothing in two does Edwards. Wind now blowing pretty good inward. From the batter's eye in center field now that one misses it's one ball two strikes. One two pitch outside. Moore had ideas but wisely stays away. Mention more. Big part of this privateer offense. Here's the 2 2, and Edwards challenges him with a fastball. About belt high, swing and a miss. And Edwards with a big strikeout there. His second Super One Food strikeout, and there's one away here in the top of the fourth inning as we move along on this Tuesday. Again, if you're just tuning in on the radio or an SEC Network Plus, no 10 run rule in effect at the moment, we're told. Take that for what it is. They did not agree to it. Not that they didn't agree. They just decided not to put it in effect for this game prior to the game when they met with the umpires. Swing and a miss by Dela Cruz, who stands in. And Edwards ready to go. Like a pitching machine. Another yeah. swing and a miss. Nothing in two quickly to Dela Cruz, who flied out. First time up to Dylan Cruz in center field. Love the fast pace, guys. Here's the nothing and two delivery. He called strike three on the outside corner. And Garrett Edwards feeling it now. Third strikeout in relief. Two gone here in the top of the fourth inning. Good Mitchell morning, Sanders. good afternoon, good night. Just three fastballs right down the middle there from Garrett Edwards. So now we'll see Sanford. Grounded out right to the pitcher. Chase Shores back in the second. He fouls this one just left of third base. 0 oh, and 1 the count. You know, Garrett Edwards is one of those guys like Alex Malazzo. Like, Coach, don't forget about me now. He's out there pumping it in there at 95 miles an hour. The hill one misses high and outside. One ball, one strike. With a changeup and a wipeout slider to boot. Edwards delivers the 1 1. Swing and a miss. Got that one by him at 95, and it's 1 and 2. Twenty fourth pitch of his relief effort and it's a swing and a miss got him to chase this one low breaking ball gets him. So again nice job by Garrett Edwards quick work of the privateers in the top of the four three up and three down. Tigers try to find some offense it'll be the six seven and eight hitters Fry Jones and Thompson when we return to the box UNO nothing LSU nothing fighting Tiger baseball. From TJ all right, fans, thank you for voting in tonight's Raising Kings BDJ's Song of the Game contest. Our winning song tonight is Levels by Amici. Raising Kings, one love.
Leadoff hitter for the Tigers at the fourth inning, right fielder. Your home for LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball. This is the LSU Sports Radio Network. Ethan Fry leads it off for LSU. Bottom of the fourth. Still no score in this one. Fry batting for the second time tonight. First pitch missing by Mercer. It's 1 0. He was caught looking back in the first inning to finish that bases loaded threat for LSU. There's a breaking ball for Mercer again, able to find the location. One ball and one strike. Talked about it over the weekend. Tigers going to be in Bryan College Station to open up SEC play before they return on the 24th. Is the 1 1. High and inside. Fry stays away, and it's now 2 and 1. Arkansas will come to town for a three game set. We were told on Saturday, basically on Saturday, maybe different now, it was standing room only available at lsutix.net. 2 1. Fry launches this one. The right center field, getting a step on it, coming over will be Williams, and he will have it for out number one. So he may need to find StubHub to get seats to that one. This place will be electric. Yeah. As it will be at Bluebell Park, no doubt. Seems to happen whenever the Tigers of any sport show up at Texas A&M. Have fun. <laughs> huh. <laughs> Sarcasm detector just went off. Nice. Here's Jared Jones and the first pitch is strike at the knees. Nothing to one. Jones a strikeout victim. Mercer got him on a breaking ball. Back in the second inning. So Jones with his second at bat here. The 0 1 inside slides Jones back a bit. It's one ball one strike. Right handed. Action going for UNO down in the bullpen. We're in there. Camo unis, least jerseys. Here's the 1 1. Breaking ball again in for a strike. That one drops in at the knees, and now Jones behind in the count 1 and 2. Give Colton Mercer some credit. He has kept the Tigers off balance, been he able has. to locate the breaking ball. Outside of that first inning, he's been pretty dialed in. 1 2. Look out. Jones again had to get out of the way. That was going to catch him in the rib cage. 2 and 2 now. Yeah, down to the bullpen. That's. Red shirt freshman Trey Usi, 6 187 pounds, out of Lafitte, Louisiana, went to Fisher High School. 2 2 pitch to Jones, missing low. That'll fill the count now, 3 and 2. Another payoff delivery coming from Mercer and Challenged him with a fastball. Jones fights it off. Foul off the front of the plate. Still three and two. If you haven't had a chance to take in a Jared Jones home run just gonna with that. your own eyes, <laughs> you're missing something. Young man possesses a ton of power in that swing. With one out, a payoff pitch. Swing and a miss. Down on strikes for the second time. That's a good location by Mercer. A little off the outside corner. So that'll be the second out of the inning. It's the fifth strikeout for Mercer here. And we'll see Jordan Thompson who grounds it out to his counterpart. Caston Fur at shortstop. His first and only time up in the second frame. Both teams scoreless. Both teams with two hits so far tonight. Pitch to Thompson. Check swing fouled into the screen right side. Nothing in one. Fans get low rate long term financing right now on powerful Kubota tractors, mowers, and utility vehicles. Just visit LSUKubotaDealers.com for your nearest Kubota dealer. The 0 1 sales high and outside. 1 and 1 to Thompson. Yeah, you got to think that Blake Dean is absolutely loving what he's seeing from Colton Mercer, who's up to 73 pitches now, by the way. 1-1 one, one, up the middle comes off the body of Mercer. He'll chase it down, throw off balance. Nice and the left-hander able to get the throw in time to Heron. As Mercer, slow getting up, took it right out of the thick of the leg. And he was able to find the ball right in the mound and then kind of fall and throw with his left hand in time to record out number three. So sharply hit, but comes off the body of the UNO starter. And that'll do it for LSU. They go three up, three down in the bottom of the fourth. 
still scoreless here at the box. Head to the top of the fifth. This is Fighting Tiger Baseball. Bryce is our contestant for the Waterburger Fry Shuffle. Bryce wins. He'll win prizes for himself and his entire row. All right, check out the right field video. There are three Waterburger Fry boxes and one Waterburger Fries. If Bryce guesses which box contains the fries, he'll win Waterburger for himself and his entire row. Okay, keep your eyes on the fries. Waterburger Fry Shuffle. Fighting Tiger Baseball. This is the LSU Sports Radio Network. Top of the fifth inning, Anthony Heron Jr. to lead it off. First pitch a strike from Garrett Edwards. Pitchers duel so far. No runs, two hits for both teams. That's all. This one misses outside to Heron, who grounded out to Jordan Thompson back in the second inning. Here's the 1 1 from Edwards. Chopper towards second, waiting on it. Dugas takes it high with the glove, throws the first in time for out number one. Hey, Garrett Edwards has been lights out since coming into the game. And it is absolutely a pitcher's duel. Both teams with some threats so far. Tigers had the bases loaded in the first inning. And then Chase Shores let the first two runners aboard. They got to second and third to start off the third. Strike sets up Bailey to get his at bat started. Nothing in one. Bailey a walk. He was left stranded at third when UNO threatened there in the third inning. This pitch in the dirt. Evens it up one ball and one strike. The 1 1. Swing and a miss on an elevated fastball. Gets Edwards ahead one and two. Colton Mercer, by the way, through four innings, giving up those two hits, one walk, and five strikeouts against the Tiger hitters. The one two swing and a miss. Garrett Edwards trying to catch up with him and does. It's his fifth strikeout in relief. Two gone here in the top of the fifth. Yeah, he's punched out five of the seven batters that he has faced. And the play for the privateers, center fielder, Isaac Williams. Garrett Edwards out there feeling it. So now Williams will stand in. He had the double to left field. He was left stranded at second base in that third inning. Breaking ball down and away. 1 and 0. Edwards fires. Another slap line drive. Grabbed by Tommy White at third. A couple of steps to the left. Grabbed it, looked at it, held on. That'll do it. Three up, three down, a very quick top of the fifth inning. Thanks to Garrett Edwards and the Tiger defense. No runs, no hits, nobody touches base. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Tigers will have Malazzo, bottom of the order, then Kling and Morgan. This is Fighting Tiger Baseball. Together, our Lady Lake and LSU are champions for Louisiana. Learn more at hotelhotelrmc.com slash LSU and check out the video board. To see what's coming up in LSU athletics, it is the Tiger Calendar brought to you by Lady Lake, official healthcare provider of LSU
the powerhouse of college baseball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Alex Malazzo has one of the Tigers' two hits tonight. He'll lead things off in the bottom of the fifth inning. Colton Mercer back out to start his fifth inning of work. The first delivery low and inside. And Doug, we mentioned earlier that Mercer doing a good job. Again, he's got control of his breaking ball. He's thrown a lot of off-speed stuff to LSU and really hasn't made a mistake pitch with the fastball. He's kept it away out of the zone for the most part. And that one misses outside 2-0. and oh. Malazzo batting for the second time. He got Kling waiting. The order will go through for a third time. What are the adjustments you think Jay Johnson is going to make here against Mercer, who so far has been really solid as the 2-0 strike at the letters makes it 2-1 and one to Alex? Uh, personally, I don't think it's going to matter because I think that Blake Dean is going to go to the bullpen for the righty-righty matchup to start off with Kling because of that. I don't think he's going to let him see him that many times around. And before the game, he said 3-4 would be amazing out of Mercer because he wanted to keep him fresh for this weekend, but now he's up to 80 pitches, so I think this will be it. It's just a guess. 3-1, Malazzo puts this one in play and then foul territory down the line in first. Thought it was going to drop in, but kept turning. And eventually, Heron with a very impressive play, able to kind of twist around and get the ball to fall in the glove, so Heron records out number one. Just a little shallow knock off the bat of Malazzo, and that will be the first out of the inning, and now we'll see the top of the order. Paxton Kling, as Doug mentioned, looks like the right-hander in the bullpen's ready to go. We haven't seen anybody move out of the dugout for UNO just yet, so Kling will get a chance to bat for the third time. He'll show bunt, pull it back. It's a strike on the outside well, corner. Blake Dean right now is on the top step. He's st looking down to the bullpen. The pitcher's ready to go, but Mercer, only with three pitches in that first at bat, starts it off here with a strike. I think he's just too good and too efficient right now. Here's the 0-1. Sales outside that'll make it one ball one strike cling with two strikeouts one in the first one in the second to say is very rare here of late is an understatement. But Mercer's been very effective. Dare I say a crafty left hander this one really outside and it's two and one now to clean and of course you got Trey Morgan now in the on deck circle. So would Blake Dean move to the righty against Morgan or would he stick with Mercer just to get through Morgan? Maybe that is more what he's thinking. 2 1 delivery. Low and inside. Now that'll make it 3 and 1 to Paxton Kling. Again, we talked about him using the breaking ball effectively here in the game, but now with a 3 1 count, dangerous territory with Kling. The pitch. There's a strike. Kept the fastball low and it's three and two. Well, Mercer has certainly earned the extra work, to say the least. Payoff pitch inside misses ball four. It'll be just the second walk given up. Again, he gave up a walk in the first inning, hit a batter in Trey Morgan. So a third free pass here gets the Tigers a runner aboard with one out, the bottom of the fifth, and a scoreless game. Now Morgan. Had a base hit, dropped one in shallow left field in the third. He come to the plate again. He's reached base twice so far. Yeah, I'm just willing to guarantee that this will be the last batter for Mercer. First pitch to Trey. Pop straight up. Foul territory going over again is Heron, the first baseman. Plenty of room, and he'll have it for out number two. So Morgan retired. Let's see what Blake Dean decides to do. Unless he only needs one pitch to get in. <laughs> <laughs> He's at 85 pitches now. You forgot to give that caveat on your guarantee. Yeah, I did. I, I did. I didn't have time. Blake Dean's going to stick with him, and I think, uh, again, he's earned it. Might not be available, though, until Sunday this weekend. So he'll face Dylan Cruz. Cruz aboard on a walk in the first. Fly it out to Bischke, the second baseman back in the third inning. Pitch to Dylan. Floats outside 1 and 0. Just a look at Blake Dean. Now a throw over. Sliding back safely will be clean. Tigers tonight left five men on base. UNO left three. There's a 1 0. Way outside. 2 0. 
said earlier Blake just had his first baby I asked him how it was he said I find I'm a little more tired at the ballpark <laughs> than normal I said that is your new normal my friend so get used to it 2 0 pitch and Dylan held back and it's a strike across the plate two and one. Kling takes his lead off first. Mercer, the 2 1 to Dylan Cruz. Nice pitch. And the breaking ball missed a little high. That'll make it 3 and 1 now to Dylan. Cruz leads the team with 23 runs batted in. Six doubles, five home runs on the year. Here's the 3 1. Big swing, and he fouls. A roller towards the third base dugout. Fills the count 3 and 2. Two gone, bottom of the fifth inning. No score in tonight's game. Kling on a walk down at first. Mercer, payoff pitch. Smacked up the middle. Into center field. Kling already to second base. He'll roll into third as they had the runner moving on a full count. And Cruz delivers. The two out single puts runners on the corners here with two outs and now Tommy White coming to the plate trying to break the seal on this scoreboard. Yeah that's Dylan's 21st hit of the year that leads the team by four. And he's reached base now 17 straight games and that extends his hit streak to 15 games. So Blake Dean out on the mound. They'll make the pitching change. Great effort tonight by Colton Mercer. He will finish up here with two outs in the bottom of the fifth inning. They'll go to the bullpen. A pitching change powered by Sunshine, your hometown John Deere dealer in Louisiana. Mercer going to get a nice hand from everyone in attendance here on the effort he gave on the mound. We'll tell you about the new privateer pitcher. Tigers runners first and third. Two outs. Tommy White at the plate in a scoreless game. This is Fighting Tiger Baseball. of college baseball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. New pitcher takes over for UNO as LSU threatening again for the second time tonight. They've got runners first and third. A scoreless ball game here in the bottom of the fifth inning. It'll be Trey Usi taking over a right-hander for Colton Mercer who pitched a well of a game here. Keeping the Tigers off the scoreboard. He'll face Tommy White with Kling at third and Dylan Cruz with a two out single he's at first base. Righty on righty matchup here as Uzi looks in works from the stretch comes set pitch to the plate missing low ball one. Yeah Uzi leads the team in appearances this is the sixth on the year he enters with a point nine three ERA and nine and two thirds innings. He's allowed nine hits only one run. 
He has one walk and eight strikeouts. He's earned two saves also in the season. 1 0 pitch uh -oh. hit a mile high to left field. See ya! That one into the left field landing. And the Tigers are on the board thanks to Tommy White, his sixth home run of the year. Three run bomb with two outs in the bottom of the fifth, and the Tigers lead 3 0. That one traveled 344 feet, got out of here in a hurry, left the bat at 104 miles an hour. That man has some pop. Gavin Dugas will stand in. Trying to keep things going here is LSU. Able to finally drive him in. Pitch high and inside to Gavin. Make it 1 0. Dugas hit by a pitch in the first. Rounded out to Anthony Heron, unassisted at first base last time in the third. Pitch missing down and away. 2 0 now to Dugas. Movie script always seems to follow that. Come in, runners first and third, face a guy like Tommy White. Tough spot to be in if you're Trey Usi and gives up the three run dinger. 3 0 now, the count to Dugas. Pitch, strike at the letters, make it 3 1. Didn't take long either. Usi's spikes are still cold from coming in. 3 1 to Dugas. Takes a big cut. Lifts it foul towards the first base dugout. And it will be out of play. 3 and 2 now the count to Dugas. Is that the second pitch he saw? Was that on the first pitch? It was pretty quick. I know that. Dugas settles back in. Payoff pitch upcoming. Lucy shakes the head now fires ground ball towards third and it gets by De La Cruz couldn't get to it in time. Bounces its way into left field and a two out single here for Dugas. In fact does keep it going for LSU three runs on now five hits for the Tigers. Yeah this fifth inning has been the big inning for the Tiger offense this year. So far at least. Okay Beloso will pinch it. Coach Johnson told us before the game not only will he try to get a few pitchers in this game. Also get a couple of guys in there to pinch it. Beloso will stand in with a runner at first and two out. Usi from the stretch delivers. Outside for ball one. LSU scored 30 runs in the fifth inning. That is not the biggest inning. They scored 36 runs in the sixth inning. Throughout the first 16 games. Beloso hitting for Ethan Fry and this pitch down in the dirt make it 2 and 0 now to Cade. But even more special about the fifth inning is they have yet to give up a run in the fifth inning. 2 0 pitch smack to right field. Sanford coming over and he's got it in time for out number three but the Tigers eventually get on the scoreboard first team to do so tonight three runs on three hits highlighted by a three run bomb off the bat of Tommy White his sixth of the season Tigers now lead three nothing we go to the top of the sixth here at the box privateers to the plate next this is fighting Tiger baseball. Choose Bridgeway Hospice where the care is personal. Celebrating 10 years of care in the Greater Baton Rouge, Acadiana, and Michael and Harriet's Bridgeway Hospice says Go Tigers. <laughs> Defensive change for the Tigers moving from left field to right field. Number 28, Paxton Swing. Now playing left field, number 23, Josh Stevenson. Number 28, Swing, now in right field. Three 
the powerhouse of college baseball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. LSU now leads 3-0 over UNO. Top of the sixth inning, cast and fur to lead it off. Garrett Edwards picking up where he left off. First pitch cold strike. Here's the 0-1. Misses outside. One ball and one strike for tonight. Lined out to Thompson and short. Caught looking last time in the third inning. The 1 1. Outside corner called strike. Edwards ahead 1 and 2. Defensive changes with Beloso coming in to pinch hit. Ethan Fry's night is done. They move Josh Stevenson into left field and Paxton Kling moves from left to right field. Caston Fur is the only batter that Garrett Edwards has not faced in the lineup. Swung on, lifted to right field. Paxton Kling will come in a few steps. Glove it for out number one. Fur retired. And like his teammates, he will head back to the dugout. Garrett Edwards has retired nine in a row. At the plate for the Privateer, second baseman, Tyler Bischke. Tyler Bischke now the second baseman. Caught looking by Edwards in his last at bat. Here's a ground ball oh, fair boy. inside the first base line. Handled by Morgan. Covering it first is Edwards, and they get Bischke at first base. Wow, what a play by Morgan, who had to really judge that ball bouncing at him. About to eat him up. About 10 feet behind the first base bag, he's able to glove it and then make a great throw to Edwards covering it first. All kinds of nasty east to west spin on that baseball heading toward the line. And Trey Morgan, the left handed fielder, of course, the left handed thrower, takes that pitch low and away. Had to field that ball in a very awkward way. That is a very difficult play made look routine by not only Trey Morgan, but Garrett Edwards over there covering it first. First pitch misses low to Asiche, who's batting for the third time tonight. And there's a strike to even it up from Edwards, one and one. And you could tell by Morgan's body language, he was trying to figure out, okay, where's the next bounce? All right, where's this next bounce? And try to keep himself in position to make that throw and had to come yeah. quickly as that one misses to make it two and one. It was hit off the cap of the bat and had some nasty spin on it. Two and one the count. Oseche awaits and the pitch skips off the dish. Three and one now. See the respect they have there for Oseche with a three two one breaking ball. Three one called strike at the knees. Fastball from Edwards is in. It'll fill the count three and two. The two outs, payoff pitch. Sent to center field, fly ball. Cruz waits on it. And that's the third out of the inning. Garrett Edwards in relief now has retired 11 in a row. His team leads 3 0. We head to the bottom of the fifth inning. Tigers come to the plate. This is Fighting Tiger Baseball. This is 
the LSU Sports Radio Network. Tigers lead 3-0 thanks to Tommy White. Three-run homer there in the bottom of the fifth inning. And Garrett Edwards and the Tiger defense doing their job as well. Jared Jones leads it off for LSU here in the bottom of the sixth inning. First pitch from Usi, a cold strike. It's nothing in one. Little celebrity sighting on the Jumbotron between the top and bottom of this frame. Parker Edwards taking in the baseball game tonight. Here's the 0 1. Just missed the outside corner. Jones stays away, and it's 1 and 1. Jones tonight, two strikeouts, one in the second, one in the fourth. Here's the 1 1. Again, Usi misses with this one outside, 2 and 1. Already another right hander starting to warm up down in that UNO bullpen. 2 1 pitch. Swing and a miss. Now that one way back. Jones way out in front. It's 2 and 2. Looks like number 43, Nolan Daniel. Transfer out of Purdue. Pitch to Jones. Foul ball. Dribbler down the third base line. Handled by Josh Jordan, third base coach. Two and two, the count remains to Jones. We hit that right off that front foot. It's never a good feeling. Even when you have gold cleats, it still hurts. Yeah. Here's the 2 2 from Usi on its way. Another big swing, jammed him in and fouls it back. You know when you're walking through a dark room and you stub your toe? <laughs> How that feels? Similar, you say? I got to give it the foul ball off the foot. It's a little more painful. 2 2. Did he go around? They'll appeal down to first. They say no on a pitch outside. That'll fill it now to Jared Jones, 3 and 2. This inning brought to you by AccuTemp Services. Don't let AC or heater outages keep you on the bench this year. Text home run to 31996. Get your Tiger tune up today. Payoff pitch in on the hands, ball four. Jones will reach base for the first time tonight. Leadoff man aboard. That'll bring Jordan Thompson to the plate. Yeah, leadoff runner aboard. That's a big deal. The Tigers have only done that once in this game so far. And that was a great at bat. He had to lay off a couple close pitches, pitcher's pitches, if you will, to earn that walk. Pitch on its way to Thompson. Thrown behind him. May have caught him. Let's Did see. Hit him in the head? Yeah, hit yeah. Him in, the, in the helmet. Yeah, he was a little slow to react. And again, I'm sure just trying to make sure he is okay. Is it thrown behind him? May have caught him just on the back of the helmet. Good news is Jordan is all right. We take a replay at this one. At oh, oh no, wow. wow. That's right by the ear hole. Man. Right by the ear hole. Rung the old bell there. Jay Johnson and the training staff out there with Jordan Thompson right now to make sure that he's okay. Last thing you want to lose is a guy like that in this game before the real season kicks off. So Jordan, uh, good news, appears to be all right as he tells Coach Johnson and Josh Walker, the trainer, that he's good to go. Runners first and second, still nobody out. It's Alex Malazzo. Malazzo had a base hit in the second, popped out foul territory just beyond first base in the fifth inning, but making solid contact so far this year. Pitch on its way, showing bunt high and inside. He'll bring the bat back, and it's 1-0. Again, the bunt laid down in front of the mound, comes off hot. Usi going to throw to third and it gets away from De La Cruz. Jones will come in to score. Going to go ahead and wave around Thompson as that baseball ended up down in the bullpen. So the miscue by Usi on the bunt by Malazzo will put Alex at second base and two runs in for the Tigers will make it 5 nothing. Just put a little pressure on that defense. Usi, because the ball was bunted right back to him, thought that he had to play at third base and he did 
If he'd have thrown an accurate throw, he would have had the lead runner easily. But a very costly error to play two runs here for Blake Dean's privateers. And it looks like he's seen enough and will go to the bullpen. Give credit to Jared Jones again. 6'4", 240, and he still moves. And I think Usi looked up and thought, wait a minute, this big guy's really running and maybe rushed the throw a little bit. As you said, it yeah. was off. And LSU able to take advantage of it. They will make a pitching change here in the bottom of the sixth inning. The Tigers now lead 5 nothing. Tell you about the new privateer hurler when we come back. Pitching change powered by Sunshine, your hometown John Deere dealer in Louisiana. 5 nothing Tigers. This is Fighting Tiger Baseball. LSU leads over UNO. Miscue by the pitcher Usi on a bunt. Nice bunt laid down by Malazzo, but off the bat, it looked like, again, it got to Usi quickly. He thought maybe he had time to make the play at third, as Doug said he probably did, but an errant throw allows two runs to score. Malazzo down at second. There's nobody out. Top of the order we go. Paxton cling to the plate. First delivery, another bunt. Third base side. Kling running down the first baseline, and this throw gets away. That'll bring Malazzo in to score. That'll make it 6 0. On a night where maybe the conditions outside of Tommy White's three run homer, not conducive to long ball or extra base hits, unless you doing it with the bunt and miscues by the privateers, suddenly. It is a 6 nothing LSU lead. Well, it's such a great time there to drop down a butt for a base hit with the new pitcher in the game. And that's Nolan Daniel, by the way. And you, you mentioned that maybe the speed of Jared Jones or how close Jared Jones was to third. Maybe rushed Usi, the, pit, the previous pitcher, to throw that ball to third. I am positive the speed of Paxton <laughs> Kling yes. is what made Daniel rush it on that throw to first base. So now Kling. In scoring position as Morgan comes to the plate in the first offering by Nolan Daniels, second offering overall, misses low for ball one. Daniel 1 0 on the season. He's got six innings of work under his belt for the privateers. 1 0 in the dirt, gets away from Museche, the throw down to third, and Kling slides under the tag. Pretty good throw by Seche down to third, but man, oh man, does Kling run the bases. Yeah, I mean, when he takes off, everything has to be perfect. The throw, the tag, all of it, or you can just put it in your pocket. In fact, that was a great play from Seche behind home plate. It just was very with the left close. hand. In fact, very I'm, close. Talked about the tag has to be perfect. It's Morgan. Takes this pitch inside. They appeal down to third. They'll say Morgan went around. Trey a little surprised. It's two and one. Throw's got to be perfect. Tag got to be perfect. And that time, De La Cruz with Kling bearing down on him. Not sure he ever made contact. Here's the two one. 
Slap the right field. Sanford coming over will make the throw. Kling, though, will tag up. Throw to the plate. Not in time. Sack fly RBI for Morgan. Kling scores, and it's 7 0 LSU. Yeah, that's just textbook baseball. Yep. Do whatever you can to get him in with a runner at third base and less than two outs. Trey Morgan with another great at bat there. He has reached base twice tonight. The sack fly there. And by the way, this big sixth inning continues for this Tiger offense. They're up to 40 runs now in the sixth. The next close, closest out offensive inning for the Tigers is 30. In the fifth inning, everything else is at 20. Dylan Cruz. Lifts one to center field. Williams on his way back to the track. This one's coming off the top of the wall. Cruz already into second base. He'll have a one out double. As he was just mere feet from sending that one over the wall. That's going to be his seventh double of the season. And the Tigers absolutely jumping on the privateers. Yeah, over the last two innings. The wind didn't help that one at all. It's not blowing hard, but it is blowing in. If it weren't blowing or blowing a hair bit out, as that ball right in the middle of the BASF sign out in right center field had to go about 405 feet. Cruz hit it into the teeth of the wind. Still comes up with a stand up double. And so, by the way, he was about five feet away from second when the ball hit the wall. <laughs> he can really move. Tommy White, he put one into the left field landing his last at bat to get the scoring started. Facing Nolan Daniel for the first time tonight. The strike on the outside corner makes it 0 and 1. Riley Cooper is warming up down in the LSU bullpen. Likely see him next inning. Still just one out. The 0 1 in the dirt gets away from Useche, and that will allow Dylan Cruz to jog his way into third. And with one out, again, the Tigers have another run just 90 feet away. Things have certainly heated up on the field here in the fifth and sixth inning. But remember, fans, when you're ready to cool it down, count on slow melt ice. Colder, cleaner, and longer lasting. Check them out at slowmeltice.com. 1 1 to White. Big swing, but he fouls this one into the screen. And it's 1 and 2. And that's Cannon Clayton now, or Cannon Clayton, a right hander out of Jesuit High School in New Orleans, a freshman warming up for the privateers. 1 2 to White. Missing low from Daniel. Evens account two and two. Two two inside and low. Build the count now to Tommy White. Tigers four runs on just one hit. Two costly errors on bunt plays by the privateers. Payoff pitch up the middle, base it into center field. If Tommy now the rib is, Cruz comes in, touches home plate. It's now 8 0 LSU. And that is the fifth run of the inning scored by the Tigers, who will send their eighth batter of the inning to the plate. Catch up some, on some scores around the SEC. Two guys stands in. Reach base twice tonight. Once hit by a pitch, had a base hit in the fifth inning. First delivery misses low. Make it one and oh. And Doug, you mentioned that big number in the fifth inning for LSU this season. Seems to be a trend. You've either seen a pitcher two or three times, or you've gotten to the bullpen. If you're LSU, that seems to be. The M.O. is Dugas drives this one towards the scoreboard in left center. And Gavin Dugas blasts one out of here. How about a two-run homer for Dugas? His fifth of the season. And the Tigers now lead 10-0, make it 11-0. Thought that would look like it had a little extra juice on it. 110 miles an hour off the bat, 387 feet. And if Tommy White's got out of here quick, then that one was even quicker. Wow, 110 off the bat. That's moving. The 
again there's no 10 run rule in effect prior to this game and the Tigers now lead 10 nothing in the bottom of the sixth after playing 10 runs in the fifth and so far seven runs alone in this bottom of the sixth inning and we'll see Josh Stevenson who checked in in left field he'll bat for the first time tonight again just one out in the inning first pitch misses low is in this barrage of offense by LSU started with Tommy White's three run homer in the bottom of the fifth inning scoreless through four and a half here at the box 1 0 swing and a miss one and one for Stevenson. One one skips the plate two balls one strike you talk about the home runs and of course everybody looks at the stat line across the country wants to see what team is belting out the most home runs but when you look at LSU this season in the non conference the number of two run bombs three run bombs of course Tommy White with a grand slam on Sunday it's not a lot of solo shots a lot of real impactful home runs now a two two count to Stevenson. Two two off the end of the bat foul rolls down the third base line. Still two and two. And don't forget just like the winning lineup. Cintas has the all star services for all your business needs everything from uniforms to kitchens. Restroom solutions get ready for the workday with Cintas. Stevenson the left handed hitter awaits on the two two swing and a miss. Fastball down and slightly away. Nice delivery by Nolan Daniel records the second out of the inning. His first strikeout in relief. Looks like we'll have a, another pinch hitter coming in. Josh Pearson will pick up a bat. He'll bat for Jared Jones here in the seventh spot. This will be his 14th plate appearance of the season. Pitches high and outside to make it one and zero. Looking at the Florida game tonight, they didn't hit a home run, so they're at 45 on the season heading into SEC play. Swing and a miss. Uh, speed delivery from Daniel makes it one and one. And the Tigers are up now to two tonight, right? Yep. Cruises should have been out. They're up to 39 home runs, so they're right behind Florida. The 1 1 ground ball to second. Bischke scoops it up with a glove. Throw to Heron in time for out number three. But the Tigers do some damage. Seven runs on three hits. A couple of errors by the privateers. Tigers leave no man on. We head to the top of the seventh. It is 10 0 LSU. This is Fighting Tiger Baseball. This is the LSU Sports Radio Network. 
Well, after going scoreless through four and a half, LSU got started. Tommy White's three-run homer made it three to nothing after five, and then a couple of errors and another home run. Sack fly RBI and a base hit single for a ribby. We now have a 10 nothing ball game. LSU out in front as Riley Cooper takes over on the mound for LSU. Third pitcher of the night and the first delivery against Tristan Moore misses outside from the left hander. It's 1 and 0. Give you a final line for Garrett Edwards. Foul back into the screen. Tristan Moore now looking at a 1 1 count. Edwards came in the third inning to relieve Chase Shores with runners at second and third and one out. Missing low now two and one to Moore. He was able to get out of that jam. He went three and two thirds, no hits or runs allowed, no walks, and five strikeouts. Two one pitch. Foul tip, but held on to by Malazzo. Now a two two count to Tristan Moore, who had a base hit back in the second left stranded with a strikeout victim to Garrett Edwards in the fourth inning. 2 2. One hopper to second base. Ben Napolt in defensively makes the play. Good throw to first and one away. Napolt takes over for Dugas at second base. And that is now 13 batters in a row retired by Tiger pitchers. Starting with the first strikeout with runners at second and third by Chase Shores. Another ground ball up the middle. Again, the Bolt getting a lot of work early. Gloves it, throws on the run. Gets it to Morgan in time. Looks smooth on both of those 4 3 ground outs and quickly two out. By the way, Chase Shores went two and a third to start it off, allowed two hits, no runs. He had a walk and two strikeouts. One of the unwritten rules of baseball. You check in, the ball's going to find you immediately. Yeah. Two outs. That'll bring Mitchell Sanford to the plate. Cooper misses with a fastball. One and oh. Looks like Blake Money starting to warm up down in the LSU bullpen. Missing low and inside. Now two balls, no strikes to Sanford, who grounds it out. Back to the mound in the second was a strikeout victim by Edwards in the fourth inning. 2 0. Chopper towards first and bounces foul. 2 and 1 the count. Fans visit your local Kubota dealers. See why Kubota, the number one rated reliable tractor under 100 horsepower in the U.S. of A. Visit LSUKubotaDealers.com for your nearest Kubota dealer and test drive a Kubota. Two outs, Cooper on the mound, the 2-1 on its way to Sanford. Slap, line, drive, just catches the screen. Boy, glad they extended the man, screens man. beyond the third base dugout. A couple of years ago, that one may have been trouble. It, it's hard to believe that we ever played baseball without those <laughs> screens above the dugouts. Especially with the mashers they have at LSU. 2-2 misses a little high and outside. So now a full count for Sanford. Hales from Berwick, Louisiana. Cooper ready to work. Payoff pitch. Chopper towards short. Thompson near the second base bag. Gloves throws to first. Cooper comes in. Tiger defense backs him up. And the privateers go in order. Three up, three down. Time for the seventh inning stretch. We got more baseball to be played. Been a while since we've done that. Tigers lead 10 0. They come to the plate. Barring a pinch hitter, we'll have Thompson Malazzo. Top of the order, Kling. This is Fighting Tiger Baseball.
of college baseball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. 10-0 our score, bottom of the seventh inning. Doug, I joked before we went to break. Been a while since we've seen the bottom yeah. of the seventh inning. Again, the Tigers with seven run rule games this season. And this past weekend, all three were run rule after seven. Yeah, it stretched out in a while. Kane and Clayton, as Doug mentioned, comes out of the bullpen. He'll go on to the mound for New Orleans. Gavin Gidry will pick up a bat. He'll pinch hit here for the Tigers. Place of Jordan Thompson in the eighth spot. The first pitch high and inside, and it's 1-0. and wonder if these two ever faced each other in high school. Pitch on its way. Lifted foul. Headed towards foul territory. Again, Heron over there near the wall. Can't make the grab, hits the top of the concrete barrier, bounces back into foul territory, and it's a 1 1 count to Gidry. Heron had to check for obstacles one too many times there on the way over. I think if he'd have run in a straight line, he would have had a good chance to catch that one. Of course, he had to figure out where all the personnel was yeah, in the a lot LSU of guys bullpen. Down there. <laughs> Here's the 1 1. Missing inside to Gavin, it's two and one. Gidry batting for the sixth time this season. Waits on the two one pitch, strike on the inside corner. Fastball there from Clayton, and it's two and two. Super player out of Barb High School. Great numbers at the plate, great numbers on the mound. Yeah. And a couple of pitching opportunities here since arriving at LSU. Here's a foul ball down the third base line. Yeah, I'm not sure where we'll hear where we will hear his name called most often in the future, but I'm pretty sure that we're going to hear his name called somewhere. Another 2 2 pitch. Missing inside will fill it up now to Gidry. I am curious to see, though. Who's going to travel on that SEC roster? I think a lot, a lot of people, especially down in that dugout, are pretty anxious as well. Payoff pitch. Lifted in the air. Heron. Near the line in shallow right field. The first baseman handles it. Four out number one. And now we will see. Believe it. Nope, it will be Milazzo. He'll stay in. So Milazzo will come to the plate. Had a base hit in the second inning. Popped up foul territory, first base side in the fifth. And of course, laid down the bunt that resulted in an error. This one misses high, 1 0. In that seven run sixth inning. Tigers scoring in a multitude of ways, including a couple of costly errors. That one missing high, make it 2 0 to Malazzo. So far around the SEC tonight, five teams have completed their games, all five winners. Kentucky defeated Indiana 12 to 2. 2 0 pitch. Malazzo pops it up, shallow center field, and coming in, Williams had a good jump on it. Center fielder has it for out number two. South Carolina tossed a shutout against Presbyterian. Five to nothing they win. Georgia wins 10 to eight over Wofford and Athens. Tennessee at home against Lipcomb, 10 to nothing winners. Florida had to come from behind against North Florida. They eventually pull out the victory seven to two in Gainesville. Georgia Tech and Auburn in a dogfight right now in the Plains. Georgia Tech leads that game by a score of 11 to nine. Braden Joe Bear will come in and hit. He'll pinch hit for Kling at top of the order. The two outs here in the bottom of the seventh. Pitch misses high and inside for ball one from Clayton. Joe Bear with his 45th plate appearance. Batting 250 on the year. Couple of doubles, one triple, four home runs. 1-0. Inside corner called strike to even it up one and one. 
Joe Bear has the wind in his favor here. Of course, the left handed hitter, wind blowing a little more briskly now, left to right, towards the intimidator here at the ballpark. 1 1. Breaking ball catches the inside corner at the knees, and it's now 1 and 2. Number six, Vanderbilt, is at Belmont. They're in the bottom of the seventh inning, leading 9 to 5. And how about Ole Miss? Third ranked in the country at Jacksonville State tonight. They're trailing 10 to 5 in the bottom of the seventh. 1 2 comes in low, evens account to Joe Bear, 2 and 2. Mississippi State with a comfortable lead over Nichols, 9 to 4. And Starkville, they're in the top of the sixth inning. Two outs, bottom of the seventh, 2-2 two -two pitch. In on the hands. Joe Bear thought he was hit, saying it caught me on the hand. And home plate umpire Jordan Alvarado not really buying it at the moment. He's saying and the it, catcher caught the ball, so it's yeah. a foul ball and he's out. Yeah, and Joe Bear is saying, wait a minute, it hit my hand. That would be out number three. Jay Johnson comes out, and it looks like we're going to go under review for the first time tonight. So they are going to protest the call at the plate, and umpires will meet in front of the mound. Joe Bear was emphatic. Almost as look he was trying to back out. Pitch was inside, obviously. Said it glanced off his hand. I guess we're going to go take a look at it, maybe. And of course, he did not offer a swing, yep. so they will go under review. First review of the night presented by Acme Oyster House, so we'll see. As it was called on the field, strike three would have been a third out of the inning. Privateers were headed to the dugout, but now they'll hang out on the diamond a little bit here. As two of the umpiring crew will go in and take a look at it. Tiger fans, get ready to taste victory with a victory grill for barbecue guys. Just get your victory grill today. Become a backyard barbecue champ at bbqguys.com. Yeah, had I had I known we'd have a little delay, I would have waited on the scores. Can't really tell much from the replay. Arkansas is winning 11 to six over UNLV. They're in the top of the seventh inning, also in the top of the seventh. Alabama tossing a shutout at South Alabama. They lead four to nothing right now. And then finally, in the bottom of the sixth inning, this weekend's upcoming opponent, the Texas A&M Aggies lead Houston at Houston by a score of two to one. I'll give you some of those matchups this weekend. Alabama will be at Florida. Ole Miss will be on the road at Vanderbilt. South Carolina will travel to Athens to face the Bulldogs. Mississippi State will be at Kentucky. Of course, you're fighting Tigers. Will be in College Station this weekend, and Tennessee will be at Missouri. Oh yeah, Auburn will also be at Arkansas. Can't wait! Can't wait for the SEC to start. Can't believe it's already here, really. But time flies when you're having fun. That's what they say. Right now, time slowing down under yeah, review here. A little bit. Again, I think Jordan Alvarado, again, there's so much that home plate umpires now are asked to handle, but it appeared he called it a foul ball, but then the privateers catcher, CJ, had to say, hey, yeah, that's strike three. We're out of here, right? Because I caught the ball, and right. then he kind of hesitated. Braden was saying, wait a minute. I didn't have a swing. It actually moved, the, moved my arm a little bit to get out of the way, which moved the bat, but it caught me in the hand. So that's why we're under review. And this one taking a little bit of time here. Fans H&E Equipment Services, the official construction equipment partner of LSU Athletics. For all of your rental needs, call 877-700-RENT or visit herentals.com today. Here they come. We'll find out. Hit his hand. He'll go to first base. So it is not the third out of the inning. The privateers will hang out on the diamond and the Tigers with two outs will have Joe Bear down at first base. So they overrule with video evidence in the review. So the Tigers win that one. Good challenge by Jay Johnson to break Joe Bear. We'll see Mick Paul come in to swing the bat. The bat for Trey Morgan. That is the fourth time tonight the Tigers have been hit by a pitch. Kanan Clayton fires to the plate, misses outside to Mick Paul, batting for the seventh time. Paul, the freshman out of Salt Lake City. Left-handed batter, 
And this one high and outside, make it 2 0. Right hander tossing down in the bullpen for Blake Dean. And Blake Money has been down in the Tigers' bullpen for a while now. Another pitch, another ball. It's now 3 0. Looks like Matthew Maldonado down there. Redshirt senior transfer out of Lipscomb. 3 0 pitch, take is on. Strike down the middle, make it three and one. Tigers leading 10 nothing here. No 10 run rule for this game in effect. Three one outside corner that will fill the count now to Paul. He'll be ready to swing away with two outs and a runner at first. Runner goes, payoff pitch, and a called strike three. And that will finally get the privateers in the dugout. So the Tigers, no runs, no hits. They do leave one man on. We go to the top of the eighth. It's 10 0 LSU. This is Fighting Tiger Baseball. Sports Radio Network. Top of the eighth inning, UNO comes to the plate. They trail LSU by a score of 10 to nothing. And LSU trying to make it 11 straight wins. Finish up before they head to SEC play. First offering missing high to Anthony Heron Jr., the first baseman. It's 1 0. Herring on the night 0 for 2. As again, we told you, Blake Money expected to come in, and he does. There's a swing and a miss to make it one ball and one strike. Yeah, fourth outing of the year for Blake Money. The 1 1. Swing and a miss, and he gets ahead 1 and 2. Blake comes into the game with a 2.25 ERA. He's worked four innings, allowed two hits, only one earned. He has no walks and seven strikeouts on the season. One two sent back foul into the backstop. Still one ball two strikes couple of changes obviously with pinch hitters coming in Joe Bear takes over in right field. Jack Merrifield will check in. At second base we'll move Ben to Over to third base Gavin Gidry at short. Tommy White manning the first base bag here's the one two. Misses high to even the count two and two Stevenson and Cruz. Still in the. Outfield, left and center, respectively. Palazzo behind the plate. 2-2 two -two off the end of the bat, but foul into the screen. It's an amazing 10-game win streak. Number one, you win 10 games in a row. But at this point, here in the top of the eighth inning, LSU outscoring opponents in that run 136-14. to 
Oof, is this one misses low and feels the cap and it goes to show you pick the pitcher you want to talk about Doug and you know much more than I when it comes to that part of the game. And these guys have been spectacular with a solid defense behind them. Payoff pitch to Heron just misses the outside corner with a fastball. And Money will give up the walk. That'll put the leadoff man aboard for the privateers. And that was 14 batters in a row. LSU pitchers had retired up until that walk. And that's been kind of the story for this pitching staff, Chris. They have 142 strikeouts combined and only 34 walks. That's pretty dang good. Bring Bailey to the plate. First pitch high and outside. Blake Money requesting a new baseball. Home plate umpire Jordan Alvarado sends one his way, and it's 1 0 to Bailey, who tonight aboard on a walk. Strikeout victim in the fifth inning. 1 0. Foul back into the screen. Make it 1 1. I have a small correction to make. Mississippi State and Nichols tonight are playing in my hometown of Biloxi, Mississippi. Really nice minor league park over there. Great, Great place to play. Park. Right across the street from the Beau Rivage where the Biloxi Shuckers play. 1-1 one, one misses outside. Make it 2-1. and one. Thanks some of my good friends over in Biloxi with that correction. <laughs> <laughs> Two one inside low Malazzo fires down to first and just quick. getting back was Heron. That was lightning fast. Laser throw by Malazzo. Three and one now the count to Noah Bailey. Righty on lefty matchup and the three one pitch challenges him swing and a miss. Fastball 92 and it fills the count three and two money going with that solid look. Stirrups out there for the right hander. Yeah, him and Skeens. 3 2. Get foul. Hit down the line in right and angling foul. Still 3 and 2 the count. TJ Ribs, of course, legendary Louisiana barbecue and home of the Jay Johnson show, which will premiere later this month on March 27th. Official barbecue restaurant of LSU Athletics. Be there with Coach Johnson on the 27th on Acadian Thruway, also location on Segan Lane. You can visit them online at tjribs.com. So Blake Money, another payoff pitch coming here. Top of the eighth, LSU up 10 nothing. Pitch to Bailey. This time skied in the air, left field way. And in fair territory, it will be. Stevenson who makes the grab. We're well, the first out of the inning. I think that something flew off the bat, or maybe that was his thumb guard. Bailey retired. Money wins that battle after a couple of payoff pitches. We'll have a pinch hitter come in for the privateers here in the top of the eighth inning. Mike New will bat from the right side. The first pitch for Money misses for ball one. The big guy Christian Little started to toss down in the LSU bullpen. 1 0, swing and a miss. Fastball. Off the outside corner. New slow getting it around, and it's 1 and 1. New a freshman out of Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Bats from the right side is money. We'll throw over to Tommy White. Keep an eye on Heron at first base. Here's the 1 1. Swung on and fouled. Sent to the seats down the line in right. And it's one ball and two strikes. You and O tonight, two hits have committed two errors. Big errors so far through the last four games. LSU's allowed seven hits. One out runner at first. The one two off speed swing and a miss. Money with the strikeout. 
Records the second out of the inning, picks up his first Super One food strikeout. Yeah, I saw Todd Politz made a tweet earlier. LSU scored 43 runs in the sixth inning this year, and they have allowed 39 total runs. <laughs> Delivery to cast and fur got away from Malazzo momentarily, but not enough for Heron to advance. He'll stay at first. And it's 1 0 to cast and fur leadoff spot 0 for 3 tonight. Lined out to Thompson way back in the first, caught looking in the third. And a fly ball out to right field last time in the sixth inning. Money's 1 0 delivery. Inside corner called strike. Nice breaking ball across the Inner half and it's one and one. And we'll see the pitching staff start to firm up a little bit, obviously, when SEC play begins, but gotta believe Money's looking to vie for late inning closer opportunity. That one misses short of the plate, now two and one. Along with a number of arms. And I've said it multiple times so far this season. What a difference a year makes. A full year of recruiting for Jay Johnson. 2 1. We'll tap her back to the mound. Nice backhand pick yeah. by Money. He'll throw to first in time for out number three. Showed a little bit of that defensive skill for the Tiger pitcher. So that's all she wrote for the privateers in the top of the eighth inning. Again, they trail 10 0. Tigers come to the plate. Bottom of the eighth coming your way. This is Fighting Tiger Baseball. LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball. This is the LSU Sports Radio Network. Move to the bottom of the eighth inning. Couple of changes. Get on the mound. We'll see Matthew Maldonado take over for the Privateers. And Micah New, strikeout victim to Blake Money there in the top of the eighth, will take over in center field. Hayden Travinsky will pinch hit for the Tigers. Travinsky into swing in the three spot for Dylan Cruz. Jumps on the first pitch. Base hit. Slap to left field. Travinsky will round first, but put the brakes on there. So a leadoff single. Travinsky making the most and quick opportunity. And now we'll see Tommy White, who moved to first base. He'll come in to hit. This team is just so deep. On the mound, offensively, defensively. Tommy White, three-run homer to get the scoring started in the fifth. Had an RBI single in the sixth, and he's swinging for everything there. Fouls it back into the screen. It's nothing in one. <laughs> Another guy you could watch it all day. Started the game at third base. Now at first base for the Tigers defensively. 
Season average now to 404. Stays away. This pitch from Maldonado misses outside. One and one. Six home runs for White on the year. Seven doubles as well. Trevinsky short lead off first as Maldonado checks the runner to the plate. One one misses high. Two and one. Hope you'll join us on the radio coming up on Friday. Open SEC play up on the road against Texas A&M. The 2-1 to White. Breaking ball again misses outside. Break on that one well early enough for White to hold back. It's now 3-1. 6 p.m. start. Bluebell Park on Friday. 2 o'clock and 1 o'clock on Saturday and Sunday. Tigers going to practice in Bryan College Station. I think the Coach Johnson telling me that we'll be making the trip over to Texas early on Thursday. 3 1. Misses high and outside. They'll walk Tommy White. So, with nobody out, runners first and second here for the Tigers. Yeah, I'm excited to listen to you and Billy in College Station, two of the, the best voices. On any any radio broadcast you'll find. Trying to get a hold of Billy tomorrow for the Hearing Voices podcast. Talk about the history of longtime voice of Alec Box Stadium. How it all came about. We know he's been here forever, but how did it get started? Hopefully he'll tell us tomorrow as this one misses inside. Ben DePol will bat for the first time. He was inserted into the game at second base and then last inning, or top of this inning, I should say, moved to third base swings at this one right center field and it will drop down in front of Mike and new they thought about waving the runner in but putting on the brakes Stravinsky and he will drop back to third as he really wanted to make his way home that'll load the bases though with nobody out in a 10 nothing ball game and good shot off the bat by Ben the pole a good opportunity here for Josh Stevenson Stevenson, another one of the speedsters for LSU. Yeah. Hit great outfielder. Just one of those guys, man, probably play at 10 other schools around the conference. But the Tigers are just so loaded. Steve-O not with a lot of opportunity yet this year. Eighth at bat of the season, and the pitch from Maldonado misses inside. It's 1-0. Tigers with a chance to add to their 10 nothing lead here with the bases loaded and nobody out. 10 runs on 10 hits tonight for the Tigers. Stevenson takes a hack, fouls it into the screen left side. And it's one and one. Fans Dudley DeBosier stands up for the purple and gold. Indeed, they fight for Tiger fans all across Louisiana. Dudley DeBosier proud to be an official partner of LSU Athletics. Stevenson batting 143 in his limited at bats this season. Waits on the 1 1. Aldonado misses outside. 2 and 1. Yeah, he's only had six at bats. However, he has played in 13 of the 14 games. 2 1 pitch. Again, fouled back into the screen. Evens a count 2 and 2. Travinsky aboard. Let off of the first pitch single to left field. Tommy White down at second base, walked, and then the bolt with a base hit into right center. Two balls, two strikes to Stevenson. The pitch, low for ball three. That good take right there. Runners take their lead off of first, second, and third. Maldonado, the right-hander. Payoff pitch. In the air. Left field way. Looks to be in foul territory on the run near the bullpen. Wow. Making the grab. Fantastic play by Tristan Moore. Having to work around the obstacles of the bullpen. Able to get his glove on it for out number one. 
Yeah, I mean, he had to run a long way, he had to deal with the mound down there, running over it. I honestly didn't think he had much of a chance to catch this ball. Just a basket catch that right there at the top of the mound. Outstanding. So Stevenson retired for the first out of the inning. That'll bring up Josh Pearson, who grounded out to the second baseman, Bischke, back in the sixth inning when he had a chance to bat for the first time. Again, the base is loaded. Pitch to Josh. Foul back into the screen. Nothing and one on a fastball from Maldonado. Josh on the year. Two hits and 14 previous plate appearances. Three runs batted in. The 0 1 pitch. Gapper to left center field gets down. Here comes Travinsky. The wave around White. Speeding around second is Napolt. They'll hold him up there with a two run double off the bat of Josh Pearson. RBI four and five on the year. The Tigers now lead 12 0. What a great piece of hitting there by Josh Pearson. Once again, just the depth of this ball club is maybe unlike we've ever seen before. So we'll see Gavin Gidry for the second time. Popped up to the first baseman Heron back in the seventh. Pitch to the right hander. Still just one out, runner second and third. Missing outside to Gidry, and it's one and oh. One zero pitch way outside two and zero. The bolt at third Pearson left center field double at second base. It's Kidry lets this one go by outside for ball three. Miguel Seche was attempting to throw down to third, but decides to hold it. So now a 3 0 count to Gavin Gidry with runners second and third, just one out. Swing and a miss. Green light on, and the fastball from Maldonado gets by. Three and one. Good swing there. He was right on it. Here's the 3 1 pitch inside for ball four. That'll load the bases. So, with one away, runners first, second, and third. Tigers up 12 0. See Alex Malazzo started tonight's game at a base hit in the second. Laid down a bunt in the sixth inning. Brought in a couple of runs on throwing errors and then flight out last time in the seventh to center field. First pitch from Aldonado a strike at the knees nothing in one. Tigers an impressive once again 12 runs on 11 hits tonight. The 0 one held back misses high and outside one ball one strike. Tigers have Napolt at third, Pearson at second, Gidry on the walk at first base. The 1 1. Strike on the inside corner, 1 and 2. How about Auburn tonight? Once trailed 10 to 4 to Georgia Tech, now tied it up 11 apiece in the bottom of the seventh inning. That one in Atlanta. Nope, that one's at Auburn. Swing and a miss. Malazzo down on strikes for the second out of the inning. An old miss has fallen to Jacksonville State, their third loss of the year, 10 to 6. So with two down, Braden Joe Bear will swing for the second time. He was hit by a pitch in the seventh inning. And if everyone else holds on, Ole Miss would be the only 
SEC school with a loss tonight. First pitch, Maldonado catches the outside corner with a fastball, and it's nothing in one. Bases loaded here now with two outs. Tigers already plating two runs on three hits here in the bottom of the eighth. The 0 1 ground ball, but just right of first base foul. Sharply hit ball, but now nothing in two to Braden Joe Bear. Maldonado stares in. Two outs. 0 oh, 2 count to Joe Bear. The pitch. Just missed the outside corners. Seche let it hang in the mid a little bit, but home plate umpire Jordan Alvarado kept with his ball one call. One ball, two strikes to Joe Bear. Again, tries the same spot. Again, just missed. Now two and two. Two really good pitchers' pitches there from from Maldonado and two great takes from Joe Bear. So with the bases loaded, two outs and a 2-2 two -two count. Left-handed hitting Joe Bear awaits. Maldonado fires. Missing inside. That'll fill the count. So Joe Bear making Maldonado work. Who got off to a couple of really good pitches to start this at bat. Hey, got to throw a strike here. Joe Bear will ready the bat. Bases loaded, payoff pitch. Misses low, ball four. That'll bring in the Polt. Walks in a run, does Maldonado. That will make it 13 to nothing, LSU. Free passes. Free passes are a killer. Five walks now, four hit by pitches. Jack Merrifield. Checked in to play infield. Now he'll swing the bat for the first time tonight. First pitch to the right hander. Big hack, but foul into the screen above the first base dugout. Makes it nothing and one. Merrifield just his fourth at bat of the season. Another one of those great utility infielders. Looking for his first hit of the season. He's got the bases loaded here with two outs. Pitch missing low. One ball, one strike. Now Pearson at third, Gidry at second, Joe Bear on the walk down at first. Thirteen to nothing, LSU leading. The one-one, way outside and high, two and one. Field readies the bat, the 2 1. Outside, ball three. Mm. Maldonado just continues to pitch himself into trouble. 3 1 pitch. Ball four, that'll walk in another run to make it 14 to nothing, and immediately Blake Dean off the high step in the dugout. They'll make a change as the Tigers set to bat around. Hayden Trevinsky will step up next. Started off this inning with a base hit to left field, came around to score. So pitching change for New Orleans with two outs here in the bottom of the eighth inning. The Tigers have played it four runs on just three hits. They lead 14 to nothing. Tell you about the new pitcher when we return. This is Fighting Tiger Baseball.
LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball. This is the LSU Sports Radio Network. Two outs here in the bottom of the eighth inning. New pitcher checking in for the Privateers. LSU leading 14 to nothing. This game was scoreless through four and a half, and then Tommy White busted through, and Tigers have not looked back. Three run homer in the bottom of the fifth, made it three to nothing. A big seven run sixth inning, as the Tigers tend to do. And then four runs so far here in this inning as Jacob Mead takes over. And Hayden Travinsky, who started this inning with a base hit, came around to score, stands in. Bases loaded for the Tigers. First pitch called strike, and it's 0 1 to Travinsky. Fourth appearance of the year for Jacob Mead. He's worked three and a third, allowed one hit, no runs, no walks yet, four strikeouts. The 0 1 to Hayden, up the middle, base hit into center field. That'll score Gidry. They wave Joe Bear around. And Hayden Travitsky now with back to back hits as the throw from center field rolls all the way to the dugout and runners will advance. Merrifield into third and Travinsky into second base. Another costly error. Yikes. Runners will move ahead. Still just two outs. And Travinsky, I said, wasted little time when he had his first pinch hit opportunity in this inning. And does the same thing on this one. Right back up the middle. And now it is 16 to nothing LSU. Yeah, that old 10 run roll. Looks pretty good right now if you're Blake Dean. Tommy White to the plate. He's two for four tonight, including that three run over. He's got runners second and third. Takes a big swing. Big yoke, but fouls this one to the third base dugout. It's nothing and one. Yeah, I don't think Tommy White feels bad that the score is 16 to nothing. Doesn't seem to affect his swing at all. <laughs> Started the game at third, now playing first base defensively. The 0 1 absolutely slap but foul into the front row just out of the reach of the front row down the line and left caroms off the Thank wall goodness. Yeah. Goodness that padded concrete barrier took the brunt of that one. It's nothing in two to white. Now he'll let it travel and try to let it get deep maybe hit it to right field. Two outs runner second and third the 0 2. Swing fouled into the screen. Tommy White right now looks like he's ready to swing if it's close. He's ready to jump on it. Yeah, I mean he he just looks the part. Gold chains everywhere. Two outs, nothing in two to White. Mead fires. Just missed. Good eye by Tommy White. That one just above the letters. They could one and two. And don't think kids aren't watching. I got I got my my son's team. There's more gold chains on my son's nine year old team than maybe LSU has. Here's the one two pitch swing and a miss. And the privateers finally in the bottom of the eighth inning where the Tigers score six runs on four hits. Two men left on for the Tigers. The Privateers have three outs to work with. A long way to go. They trail 16 to nothing. Top of the ninth from the box. Coming up, this is Fighting Tiger Baseball. Now pitching for LSU number 99, Christian Little. Little, a new pitcher for the Tigers. Thank you. 
have had that second base, he would have five and four. So he had very few of his left field, two sixes in the center field, and five was at third base. Your home for LSU Fighting Tiger Baseball. This is the LSU Sports Radio Network. Top of the ninth inning here at the box. LSU, to say they're in control, it's about 16 0. They lead over UNO. Tyler Bischke will lead it off. Christian Little takes over on the mound, and the first pitch from the big right hander is swinging a miss. 0 and 1 to Bischke, who's 0 for 3 tonight, including strikeout caught looking in the third inning. The 0 1 misses high. One ball and one strike. Couple of changes, couple of movements on the diamond for LSU. Jack Merrifield, who checked in earlier in the game. At third base, now out to left field. Stevenson moves from left to center field. Joe Bear, of course, stays in right. That pitch misses high from Little, make it three and one. Tommy White moves from first back to third, where he started tonight's game. Gavin Gidry takes over at short, Ben DePolt back over to second, and Hayden Travinsky at first base. There's a swing and a miss. And it's a Pinch hitter Miles Austin in for UNO, junior out of Atlanta. So he replaced Bisky, and it's a payoff delivery from Little. Skied into the air, shallow left field. Calling for it is Gidry, and he will have it on the infield dirt at shortstop for out number one. One down, two to go for the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Trying to move to 16 and one on the year, make it 11 straight victories, and then head to. Brighton College Station for SEC play this weekend. Yeah, Christian Little making his team leading sixth appearance of the year, fifth out of the bullpen. He has a .77 or lower, lower than that now. ERA's 2-0 and coming into the game. He's worked 11 and two-thirds innings, allowed six hits, only one run, two walks, and an impressive 15 strikeouts. Swing and a foul off the bat of Max Diaz, a redshirt sophomore out of Porter, Texas, who will bat in the three spot for Miguel Asuche here. It's one and one the count. Little fires. This one hit foul down the line. Good shot, but it'll find the seats in left. One and two the count now to Diaz. Fans, remember when the Tigers win, you win. Enter promo code LSU50 the day after an LSU baseball win. You'll receive 50% off your online order at PapaJohns.com. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's. One, two. Low and away. Two and two now to the right-handed hitting Max Diaz. Two-two pitch from Little. Slap. Down the line and left. This one will roll its way to the wall. Merrifield will dig it out on the track. And a pinch hit double off the bat of Diaz with one out here in the top of the ninth inning. How about this, Chris? Leading into the SEC play, SEC teams and individuals entering this week will have five. Week five have ranked number one statistically in the NCAA, including Tennessee's 2.17 ERA, Florida's 221 hits. Florida and South Carolina's 45 home runs. Florida's 202 runs scored. Andrew Duran, a pinch hitter, steps in. Little misses inside for ball one. Auburn has a player named Ike Irish with 11 doubles. Florida has a player with 13 home runs. Paul Skeens has 48 punch outs. That's most in the country. 1-0 pitch, misses low. Now 2-0 to Duran. And Dylan Cruz with a 648 on base percentage. Also leads the country. By the way, Cruz tonight reached three out of four times. Runner at second, one out, top of the ninth. 2-0, fastball misses away. Now 3-0. Duran with his first at bat of the season. Called upon here in a 16 to nothing LSU lead. Got a 3-0 count, little fires, and that's ball four. 
That'll put runners first and second here with one away. Coach Dean, no surprise, going to use this opportunity. Get some guys some action here. Game with the game already decided. Dylan Mock will pinch hit, right handed hitter. This will be his 11th bat of the season. There's a strike from Little, but it's nothing in one. The 0 1 from Little, swing and a miss. Nice breaking ball that tailed away from the right hander, and it's nothing in two. Well, all those numbers you mentioned, Doug, basically shows you that when it comes to college baseball, it just means more in the SEC. Here's the 0 2 down low, blocked up by Malazzo, one ball, two strikes. Yeah, it really does. I mean, you've got, depends on what poll you look at, but. Seven teams ranked in the top 10 or 11 in the country from the SEC. Runners first and second, one out. The one two in the dirt got away from Malazzo. Runners will advance to second and third. Yeah, probably not the finish Jay Johnson was looking for here from his reliever, Christian Little. Now a 2 2 count, one away. Two runners in scoring position. Well, you know, it's big, too, because LSU leads the country in shutouts. They have five shutouts on the season. They need two outs here. Strikeout would be big to increase the chances of that happening. Dylan Mock, the right-hander, awaits. The 2-2 two -two pitch. There, there it is. Swing and a miss. Little comes back with a strikeout after the wild pitch. And there's two gone. Two down, one to go for the Fighting Tigers of LSU. The pitch hitter for the privateers number 20, Nathan Blasick. Let's get that zero on the board. The pitch Nathan Blasick, junior out of Halifax, Pennsylvania, will be a pinch hitter here. Left hander in the first offering, misses low from Little, 1 0. Stand corrected, Nathan Blasick. Got Diaz and Duran, second and third. The 1 0 the strike pitch. on the outside corner. One ball, one strike. Little fires. The 1 1 swing and a miss. Now he's ahead in the count. One ball, two strikes. And those Tiger fans here tonight on a fairly chilly evening at the box will rise to their feet. Start the noise, and with two outs, two men on, a 16-0 LSU lead. Little stares in, now comes set. Here's the one-two. Down low, missing for ball two. Swell will subside for just a few moments. Blasic awaits from the left side. Here's the two-two. Also skips off the dish. Now a full count. Pretty good take right there. That looked like a strike for a long time. Payoff delivery. Runners second and third with two outs, top of the ninth. Little fires. Breaking ball called strike three. And that will do it. Tigers get the win. 16 to nothing over UNO. Nasty pitch from Christian Little to end it. LSU now 16 and 1 on the year, making 11 wins in a row as they wrap up the non con. The Tigers are now 16 and 1 this season. UNO is 11 and 6. The winning pitcher for the Tigers is Garrett Edwards. His record is 2 and 0. Lost charge to Colton Purser. His record is 2 and 1. Hands head over to Drago's to redeem the order of Drago's body and rolls. The Tigers have a double. You win one free order. Drago, Tony Mitchell, Charlie Rowe, Make sure you follow the directions of officers as you leave the state of contrail traffic. You can use for your state and speedy exit. Our next home game is next Tuesday night, March 21st. 6.30 p.m. LSU versus Central Arkansas. That's our next home game. One week from tonight, Tuesday, March 21st, 6.30 p.m.